Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are now with the second part of our discussion on acute inflammation for the laboratory session. We are going to take up uh, four slides for this session. We have slide 82, that is the brain abscess, slide 102, that's peptic ulcer, slide 235, acute appendicitis, and slide 265, acute gangrenous necrosis. Okay. So, uh, okay, so what we have here, we are going to have slide 82. And slide 82 would be a brain tissue. Okay, so let's go over with the entire slide, although this slide is not as good as the one in acute meningitis. Okay, so let's try to go over. Okay, so that is the scanning view for this particular slide. Okay, we go to the low power magnification and we can appreciate the presence of cells that are inherent uh, of uh, the brain tissue. So we have here the neurons with the pyramidal cells and then we have the smaller cells which are the glial cells. So brain abscess is referred to a localized area uh, that would be composed of necrosis of the brain tissue and it is associated with brain infection or bacterial infection sorry okay so remember in the first uh, uh, in the second chapter we take note that when we see the presence of uh, liquefactive necrosis or necrosis per se we can have a change in its color in its appearance and this one, the liquefactive necrosis, you do not see the uh, ghost outlines of the, of the tissue, its character, its architectural pattern. Instead, you would see the presence of something like cellular debris, and that would be characteristic for liquefactive necrosis. And it is accompanied by a lot of uh, inflammatory cells. Okay, so these are Necro, uh, these are neutrophils, okay? So the, uh, the brain abscess here can be associated with uh, direct implantation of the organisms uh, or it can be a local extension when we have patients who have sinusitis, mastoiditis, or if they have infections in other sites, like in the bone, in the lung, or even following a tooth extraction. So uh, one important feature here is that you can identify that there's a presence of, of organisms, okay? So let's go first with the low power magnification so that you would appreciate Okay. Okay. So these are bacterial colonies on a low power magnification. There, these are accompanied by a lot of inflammatory cells. Now we go to the high power magnification. There. So you can see the presence of uh, round organisms. So these round organisms. Uh, can be streptococcal or staphylococcus. But because of the character, the uh, cluster, okay, most probably this would be streptoc uh, staphylococcus. Okay, so these are the other, other uh, bacterial colony sites. And this one, so these are the bacterial colony sites. You can see the appearance, they tend to be uh, round organisms and they are accompanied by 
a lot of these segmenters. Okay? So this is macular, uh, brain abscess, sorry. Okay. Next, we go to slide 102. Uh, this is peptic ulcer. Okay. So let's start with the appearance of the tissue. So this is uh, stomach. Okay. So this would be the mucosa. Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, propria, and then you have the serosa. Okay. So a peptic ulcer would refer to a chronic mucosal denudation of the stomach or, or the duodenum. Uh, and when we are talking about peptic ulcer, it would occur in those two areas. More commonly seen in the duodenum. In the stomach, it would be identified with a lesser uh, curvature at the interface of the body and the antrum. Uh, common causes of peptic ulcer would include H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori infection, the use of NSAIDs, especially for our elderly patients, or uh, constant use of smoking. Okay. So when, uh, when we look at the slide, okay, we can see that uh, there is the presence of mucosal structures here. Here, okay, you have the mucosal structures. Um, and then there is a clear, okay, a clean margin, okay, a boundary that separates the ulcer. Okay, so there's a clean margin that separates the ulcer. And uh, grossly, when if you are the endoscopist, the gastroenterologist, or you are the uh, the uh, the pathologist who is going to uh, do the biopsy, or uh, you conduct the cutting of the biopsy, uh, it would appear to be a punched out defect. Okay, so we look at the other area. Okay, so in this case. Um, there would be the presence of a sloughing off of the gastric mucosa in this portion, okay, and it would be replaced by this necrotic debris, and it would be composed of there. So it would be composed of necrotic debris. You have uh, neutrophilic infiltrates. And if we're going to look at the, the base of the ulcer in this portion, okay, there, we can see presence of granulation tissue. When you say granulation tissue, it's composed of uh, proliferating vascular channels, presence of new vascularization, uh, the presence of uh, mononuclear cell infiltrates and fibroblastic proliferation. Okay, so you have fibroblasts, the spindle cells, you have lymphocytes, plasma cells, and then you have uh, proliferating vascular channels. So that would be peptic ulcer. Okay. Next, we go to acute appendicitis. So in acute appendicitis, uh, this is identified with inflammation of the appendix. And in 50 to 80 percent of cases, it is due to obstruction of the lumen. Okay. Okay. So obstruction of the lumen. And it can be due to the presence of a picalith that is a hard stool or the presence of a gallstone, or a tumor that impedes or that would uh, impinge on this area, or the presence of worms. So let's look at the tissue so that we would be able to see it 
better. So this is a sagittal section of the appendix. You can see the mucosa here. Uh, the appendix is known to be, or to be a rudimentary lymphoid organ. So you can see the presence of this uh, lymphoid follicles. So lymphoid follicles, they are here to be uh, seen even extending up to the submucosa. So this is the submucosa, this would be the muscularis and the serosa. Okay, so what would be the uh, what would be the diagnostic criteria for uh, the acute appendicitis? It would be the identification of neutrophilic infiltrates in this area. That would be the muscularis propria. Okay, so we have to identify for. Uh, the presence of neutrophilic infiltrates here. So you would see the presence of neutrophils in the muscularis propria. So that's a diagnostic criteria for acute appendicitis. Okay. So it's it can spread, it can grow and uh, extend into the uh, periappendicial area. In this case, you would see the presence of hemorrhage and inflammation. Okay. Our last slide for this session is the gangrenous necrosis. Okay. Okay. So in the previous slide, you would readily identify for the different layers of the appendix. But uh, if we are going to look into this slide, we can see the lumen. This would be the mucosa. This would be the submucosa. This would be portion of the muscularis propria and the serosa. So uh, because of the persistence of the inflammation, the acute inflammation, uh, from a superative type of appendicitis, it becomes a gangrenous type of appendicitis. And uh, the elements for uh, gangrenous necrosis will be the identification of a portion that of the tissue that would contain coagulative necrosis. In this case, we have to look at it at the mucosal surface. Okay, So the mucosa here, appear to be necrotic and has uh, areas of hemorrhage. So notice that you have these spaces here. These are the ghost outlines of the glands. So you try to go over at the area of the mucosa here. You also have ghost outlines of the glands. Okay. So you have those ghost outlines of the glands. Uh, but they are already dead, they are necrotic. And these are accompanied by areas of hemorrhage. And so that's coagulative necrosis. The other criteria would be the presence of liquefactive necrosis. So in this case, uh, this should be the area for the muscularis propria. But uh, this would be replaced by liquefactive necrosis and a lot of neutrophils. So, so this is liquefactive necrosis. And um, complication of this type of uh, sequela or uh, following the superative inflammation would be a rupture of the wall of the appendix and subsequent uh, abscess formation in the periappendicial area and can extend even to the other areas of the peritoneum causing peritonitis. So those are the, the four slides that we have for this session. So kindly uh, study this uh, guide so that uh, you can get good grades in the exam. Okay, so thank you and good day.